In this video, we're going to be walking through how you can build a CI CD pipeline in GitLab for something like a Dockerized Flask application. So, what I have here and what I'll provide a link to in a public repo is a Flask app that has a Docker file to define how to build this Docker image that you know has the Python already installed in it so that we can run Flask, as well as a Docker Compose file to tell Docker how to run this image as a container so we can have a working app. Um, and so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this you know, little Dockerized application and then figuring out how we can then build this into a, uh, a CI CD pipeline so we can have continuous integration, which means you know, we are able to automate how we are uh, building and testing this application as well as deploying it. So if you were using this or hosting this on something like ECS uh, with AWS, you'd want to somehow you know, get this Docker image uh, or artifact from the GitLab uh, runner environment to the Elastic Container Registry uh, so that it could be hosted in AWS and then you'd have like a, uh, an actual cluster to run that. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll walk through this whole story just so it makes a bit more sense and I'll get started. So um, before I dive into anything, I just wanna walk through how this really simple app works. So um, it's got one uh, file main.py and when you run main.py, uh, just locally, you can see that um, it's running on port 80 right now. So if I go to my uh, local host and uh, port 80 is the default host, um, it returns me a hello world. Um, and you can see if we go a little bit into the back end here, we have this templates directory where I've defined home.html and it's just returning some basic HTML for us uh, using the render template method in Flask. Um, and then uh, I'm going to uh, kill this process real quick. So we're just going to hit stop right there. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna be doing is showing how you can, uh, you know, we've dockerized this. So um, I'm gonna build this little Flask app into a Docker image and then run it in a container. So if I go to the terminal um, and then I run the command at docker compose build, um, this is going to reference the docker compose YAML file that we have. And it's gonna run through um, this stuff and bind the right ports. Uh, and it's also going to be building uh, whatever it sees in this current directory, which is that Docker file. And so I'm just using Python 3.10 uh, Slim Buster because it's a very small, lightweight Python image uh, for Docker. So it makes your builds a lot faster than if you use the vanilla Python 3.10. Um, it's about 10 times smaller um, and there's fewer security vulnerabilities for it. So um, just pro tips uh, to do this stuff when you're developing it to make your life a bit easier when you're building stuff for your pipelines. Um, and so uh, now that we've done that, I'm going to run the command at docker compose up. And before I do that, we can confirm here that, you know, local host port 80 is not returning anything. So we're going to uh, run this through Docker. We can see that our Docker image is now a container um, and it is serving traffic on port 80 of our local host because we did that port binding. So I go back to here, we can see that we are getting now a response on port 80 from our machine. So basically we've got this local app that's working great. Um, but now we want to actually make it so that other developers around us can all be contributing to this and we'll be defining some kind of you know unit testing and stuff like that. Um, so how are we gonna do that? So I'm gonna stop this container. Um, and then a final thing I'm gonna go over uh, just locally with this little demo repo is how people can run their unit tests um, manually. And so um, basically the way they do that is um, they can either run Python 3 or Python, just depends on the operating system, um, and then PyTest, dash M PyTest. And you can see that um, I wrote a little test uh, directory here and I have a, a test home route uh, file uh, and uh, function that I've also written to just assert that we are getting a 200 response when we make a get request to our home route just to make sure that our app isn't broken. Obviously, as you have more routes, you'd wanna be adding more tests, um, but for the time being, this is what we have. So um, this is how we run our tests. This is how we know everything works the way we expect it to. Um, and so now I'm going to, uh, I, I've, I've pushed this code to GitLab. And um, so I'm just gonna open up my uh, GitLab repo here. And um, what I'm going to show you guys is how we can turn this into an actual uh, full CI CD pipeline because we want to automate those manual actions of, you know, running those unit tests. And um, so, you know, we'll, we'll do that. So basically the thing I like about GitLab is they have this little web IDE, which is actually a lot better than I thought. Um, so we're just going to open this guy up 
And um, what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a new file in here. And you can see they're pretty slick. Uh, they figure a lot of people who are using GitLab are probably also using their uh, this you know automation that they have. So when you create a new file called .gitlab dash or tax.ci.yaml, um, this thing is going to tell GitLab that you are defining stages and jobs for the GitLab runner to do. And so if you uh, make a new commit to your branch or your main branch, um, what will happen is it will trigger a GitLab runner to jump in and start doing stuff. And in our case, what we want to be doing is we want to be testing this stuff. We want to be building it. We want to be deploying it. So um, in our case, you know, at the high level inside of this GitLab uh, YAML file, I'm just going to define some stages. And I'm going to say we have a test stage. We also are going to have a build stage and we'll have a deploy stage and um, just like that. And so now um, we would actually define jobs and we would associate those jobs with the stage that we want them to go into. So in my case, I'm going to write a job and I'm just gonna call this, you know, run tests. You can call it whatever you'd like, but that's just the nomenclature I'm going with. Um, you're gonna say that this is going to be affiliated with the test stage. And then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be saying, okay, GitLab runner, when you are running this job, uh, first of all, you need to have some kind of base image uh, because you know it's just this kind of naked, uh, you know, Linux, you know, environment. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to be telling it that there's this image, and I'll paste this in just so that uh, I don't sit here all day uh, typing it out. Um, Python 3.10.8 Slimbuster, and you know, for for unit testing and integration testing, very very important that you know you're using the exact same base image and images as uh, and dependencies as your actual service because if you're not your tests are not as valid um, as they should be so you know this is consistent between the docker file and our uh, gitlab uh, environment when it's doing this so um, you know this is something that i would argue should be saved as a ci cd variable in GitLab, but you know that's a separate topic. But right now, just for the sake of a simple demo, um, we're just going to be telling the GitLab runner, you know, when I run to run tests, when I want to do this job, I'm going to be using this base image, uh, and that's literally the name of the image in Docker Hub. So this is a public image for Python. Um, and the other thing we're going to be doing is saying before running this script, I want to run the command pip install dash r requirements.txt. So basically, um, you know, just like you would on your local machine, um, you're going to want to install all the project dependencies locally to that environment. Um, and that's exactly what the GitLab runner does with the before script command. Um, and then afterwards, I'm going to have the script command. So after I've installed my dependencies, I'm going to be running the command Python dash M PyTest, just like we did with our Mac. And so literally just like that, we have defined how to test this package uh, in an automated way for GitLab runner. And so I'm going to click on create a commit and um, I'm gonna commit this directly to main branch. Um, and I'm just gonna say uh, defines stages or it declares stages and uh, defines unit testing for uh, for app or I don't know, just keep it short. Um, but yeah, so, you know, have some kind of commit message. We're going to commit this. And as soon as we commit this, it will trigger a new job because as soon as you create this file inside of your GitLab repo dot GitLab CI YAML, uh, every time it sees it, it's going to go start running through these jobs. And so you can see in the bottom left of our screen here, um, that it is uh, triggering this job. I'm going to go back to the repo and we can see now, uh, that we've got this little blue thing, Pi, that's uh, telling it's running right now, our pipeline. Um, and if you just open up a GitLab account for free, like I did, um, you will fail your first job. And the reason is that they need to verify your credit card. They don't charge your credit card. They just need you to supply a credit card um, so that you know they know they can authenticate you uh, prior to giving you a bunch of free you know stuff. So um, just like that, we've got our working a uh, little, you know, app like this. And, you know, we can test our uh, pipeline to make sure it's actually catching, um, you know, things that go wrong. So if we go back to our test CICD app and we do some kind of breaking code change, 
Uh, so like if I go into my uh, web IDE again, and someone comes in here and they do something like go into tests and they modify the test to assert that the status code should actually be a 400, which is you know bad. Uh, are going to go in here and um, change the unit test for home route to uh, known bad. And we're going to uh, create a new branch. Uh, we're just gonna call it bad test. And we're going to also start a new merge request on that branch. And I'm going to commit this thing. So we're gonna let this thing go in. And then I'm just going to uh, create this merge request. Obviously, if you had teammates, uh, you know, you add them here. <laughs> if you're going solo uh, like me, then you would just work on your own and approve your own stuff. Um, but now we're going to see that it's trying to go through the build step of this guy. So it's running the tests. And it's important to note that every single time it's running these tests, it's having to re-download your image, uh, which is the reason why it's so important that you are um, going with a small lightweight image, that Python 310 Slim Buster, because it's a tenth the size, which means it's one tenth the amount of stuff to download uh, for GitLab Runner every time it's doing another build of your you know, CICD pipeline for your project, it just makes life a lot simpler. Um, but you know, as you can see here, um, that bad commit did result in us failing and GitLab actually sends you a email saying that it wasn't happy. So uh, that's pretty slick. Um, but you know, for the sake of learning how to do this stuff, um, that is how you can kind of jump into this thing and really create your own CI CD pipelines to start automating a lot of the testing and deployments that and the builds uh, that uh, you'd otherwise manually be doing. So I think this is definitely a very nice uh, way to kind of get started with these things. Um, as you want to add more stages uh, or more tests, I'm sorry, more jobs to these things. Like if you wanted to have a build stage, um, like where you're actually making the Docker image and then shipping that Docker image to Amazon Elastic Container Registry, um, you know, you would just basically learn the Linux shell commands to be running to make that all happen. And then you would be um, doing that right here. So it is pretty cool and pretty, uh, pretty straightforward once you kind of get an idea for it. So hope this is helpful stuff. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and be well.